This is the other aspect of this lab. And what I want to show is uh, where we do the actual work when we bring the animals in. Now, I have, you know, all of whatever equipment we could have here. I actually have learned a technique to sex the hatchlings with this thing. Uh, it's magnified so you can kind of see pretty good and with, with the light underneath. And uh, I clip their scales and we actually keep all the scales and like this. This is from two nests this year and just the little brown parts are the scale and this is just the, the blue slash purple is just a desiccant that keeps it dry. These scales will actually hold the genetic material pretty much forever. So as long as they're fixed in this medium, uh, we can find out their lineage. And uh, basically for 10 years, 10 years we've been collecting scoot samples from hatchlings and, and, and others. And um, I send them off to West Texas State University and uh, Southwest Texas State University and they're analyzing these scoots and um, what they found out is actually amazing that uh, back in the 70s there was no more than 200 American crocs in Florida. Well they were basically extinct or going extinct and uh, this cooling canal system that you're going to see later uh, came into being at about the early 70s. Well, then the crocs came in. They found this to be a perfect habitat for living and nesting. And to date, I've captured over 4,000 crocodiles here uh, from about 280 different nests. And we found out preliminary results of this is that all of these are from one or two males. It's just so basically American crocodiles in the 60s and 70s bottleneck. They were going extinct. Here comes this beachhead and now the population is now considered to be delisted or downlisted from endangered to threatened and a lot of that has to do with the work that you're seeing right here. So it's pretty amazing stuff. We put microchips in every one of them uh, we, we measure, we weigh, and hopefully we'll be able to catch a couple tonight and show you just how it's done. So, that's pretty much what we do here uh, in the lab, but my, my favorite part is outside, of course. Uh, hopefully we'll go out and see and maybe even capture a couple of crocs tonight. So I need to get my equipment and, of course, my trusty croc box with all the uh, we do measurements, lengths, uh, 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 weights, there's the scanner, and I'm, I would never go anywhere without my trusty croc book. You know, we have, this is number 35, and it's from day one, it started in the 70s, I guess, and uh, every animal captured scene is in this book, although it is a new era, and we have everything backed up on a computer. So I got that and trusty tape never leave home without it when you're going to catch crocs and my couple of capture nooses just in case so let's head out Go, where are we? This is uh, this year's baby, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a marked animal. All of these scoots that we clip, total length is TL. TL is actually 46.0. Snout vent is. 
it's to the cloaca, to the opening in a cloaca, and it's 28.3. So this animal, when it was hatched, was half the size. Okay, and then all of these animals received a microchip, which the number is, ready? Right. 106. 106. 596. 596. 894. The weight is, wow. Shine that light on there a little better. Okay. 235 grams. When they're hatched, they're, uh, oh, 50, 55 grams, and it's 235 grams. So this animal is, this animal is no more than three months old, and its mass has quadrupled and its total length is doubled. I'm gonna just let him go right here. And this really is my favorite part of my job, letting them go back into the wild, only for us to catch them again. <laughs> yeah, but we, we, we get valuable information. Look at that. Uh, tell me that's not cool. An endangered species making a comeback.